Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins, I run the Tech Hut YouTube channel, and for today, I am going to be your Linode Developer Advocate. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is installing Ghost on a Linode instance. So what is Ghost? In the simplest of terms, Ghost is a piece of free and open source server software that you could use to host a website. Ghost is a unique platform because it gives you a modern, sleek interface where you can host your blogs, your newsletters, but it also provides advanced features so you can actually monetize your content. So you can have members and actually charge them a monthly subscription fee to actually use your site similar to kind of Patreon. For myself personally, I'm going to be using this as a blogging platform. If you've ever written or been on any websites hosted on medium.com, it has a very similar interface both on the front and back end when it comes to actually writing articles. On the ghost.org website here, you could see some of the capabilities that it has. With some of these example websites, if you are interested in checking it out before you dive deeper into this tutorial. Now with all that, let's go ahead and jump onto Linode and begin the installation process. All right, so when you are logged into your Linode dashboard, all you need to do is go over to Create Linode. And for this tutorial, we're going to be going ahead and using the latest LTS of Ubuntu. With that, go ahead and select whatever region works best for you. I'm going to select the servers in California. And now you're gonna to want to select your plan. Now I will note before we get too far into this guide, you could go ahead and follow along, test this out for yourself. If you use the link down below, you could get a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and try out the node. So if you do not have a Linode account, I do definitely suggest you check that out. Now I'm gonna go with the Nanode one gigabyte. This is the minimum system requirements for Ghost. One of the beautiful things about Linode is as your site grows, you could go ahead and upgrade your plan as needed. So with that, we go in and scroll down. We're going to set up our root password. So just type something in that is nice, strong, and secure. And for now, we're not going to be worrying about SSH keys. One thing you might want to consider is adding backups if this is going to be a site that you actually make public and you're going to be using it on a daily basis. It never hurts to have an extra backup. So from there, let's go ahead and create our Linode. Now with our Linode provisioning and getting ready to boot up, we could go ahead and set up our domains. Now setting up domains on the node is very easy. You could do what I'm going to do a little bit later, which is just using an A record on an already existing cPanel, or you could go ahead and use the Linode name servers. And that's pretty easy. All you're going to want to do is head over to the domains panel, input the domain that you're going to be wanting to use for your ghost instance, type in the email you want it associated with. And from there, what you're going to want to do is actually link it up to one of your Linodes. This is going to make the process incredibly easy. And once you go ahead and create that domain, it's going to give you all the different name records and everything that you're going to need. And then what you're going to want to do is get those NS records from Linode and put them over on your domain register under the DNS settings for whatever domain you're going to want to be using. Now, I didn't get too in-depth in this. There's actually some really good videos that go over this on this Linode channel. So I do recommend you check that out if you do need more advanced instruction on the domain portion of setting all this up. Now for this tutorial, I'm just going to be doing this as a subdomain on a already existing cPanel instance that I have. So to do that, I'm just going to copy the IP address, go over to cPanel, head over to the zone editor. I'm going to go ahead and create a new A record for the domain that I want this to be in. And this is going to be at blog.techhut.tv. And then all I do is paste in that IP address there for our Linode and add an A record. And like I said, if you do plan on using the Linode name servers, you could go ahead and do that. We'll just be linking to another Linode video down below that will go in depth on how to properly set everything up. So now that we have our A record set up, let's head back over to our Linode dashboard for this server we have spun up. And one thing I noticed, I did forget to give it a proper label. So to edit labels, you could always just hit the little pencil icon. And it's always best practice just to name your Linode instance after the website if it is a website that you're gonna be hosting. You could obviously name it whatever you want, but that just is what works best for me when it comes to organizing everything. So with that, what we're gonna do is go ahead and log into SSH. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the SSH access right here. Give that a quick copy. I'm going to minimize my web browser, open up my terminal application, and then paste this on in. Hit enter. Since this is our server, we know that it's safe. So I'm going to say yes. 
and then type in that root password you set up when you created your Linode. Now that we're logged in, the first thing that we're gonna do is actually add a sudo user so we don't have to be using the root account. To do that, we just type in add user and then type in a username. I'm gonna go with just Brandon. Here, we're gonna input a new password retype your new password. Here's a section for user information. None of this is substantially important. You could fill it out if you want to, but for what we're doing, none of this is really needed. So I'm gonna say, yes, all that information is correct. And now we want to give our new user sudo privileges. And to do that, what we're gonna do is type in user mod dash A capital G sudo, and then the username. Hit enter. And now what we can do is actually sign into our newly created sudo user. So you type in su dash your new username. And now you can see we are logged into the Brandon user under localhost. Now with that, we're gonna go ahead and check and make sure our system is up to date. Being that this is an Ubuntu server, we can just do sudo apt update, type in our password. And you can see we have 69 packages available to update. So I'm just gonna type in sudo apt upgrade, hit enter hit enter to proceed with all of the updates and wait for this to complete. All right, so now that our system is completely up to date, what we're gonna want to do is go ahead and pull all the prerequisites that we're gonna need to get Ghost up and running. And the very first thing we're gonna need is called X. So we're gonna do sudo apt install nginx. And what this basically is, is the server that Ghost is gonna use, and it's also going to allow us to do SSL configuration a little bit later. So being that Nginx is our server, essentially, we're gonna to want to be able to access it through HTTP and HTTPS. So to do this, we're gonna allow it through our firewall. So we're gonna do sudo ufw allow. And then within a set of apostrophes, we're gonna go ahead and type in Nginx Hit enter and now that will allow connection between the outside world and Nginx. So from there we're going to want a MySQL server. So sudo apt install mysql-server. Hit enter and continue with the installation. And now that we actually have MySQL we're going to want to go ahead and set up a password. So to do this we just type sudo mysql Hit enter, and now we're logged into the MySQL monitor. And within this, all caps, we're gonna wanna type in alter user. Now within apostrophes, type in root at, and again in parentheses, we're gonna do localhost space identified with, and we're gonna do MySQL underscore native underscore password by, and then again within apostrophes, we're gonna go ahead and type in our MySQL password. Do something strong and secure. For this example, I'm just gonna do Linode, and then we're gonna end that off with a semicolon. Hit enter. And now with the password set, we could go ahead and quit out of there. And now we're gonna need Node.js. So to do this, we're gonna do curl dash SL. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste in the proper repository location. And you can see for this, we're actually using the 16th version. If I go ahead and pull this in real quick, you can see the supported node versions. Seems only even versions are supported at the moment. So it's recommended you use one of these versions. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and we're gonna finish this off with a sudo dash E bash. Hit enter. Now that we have the proper repository on our system, we're just gonna do a sudo apt install node.js, hit enter. And now what we're gonna go ahead and install is the ghost CLI. What this is gonna do is actually allow us to install and configure ghost. And for this one, I'm just gonna copy and paste this command over real quick. It's just a npm install ghost CL and the latest version of that, go ahead and hit enter. And then this is going to actually run through that process. And if everything was successful, it should look something like this. So now what we're gonna do is actually create the directory that we are gonna be installing ghost into and hosting the website from. So to do this, we're just gonna do a sudo make directory dash P, and we're gonna go ahead and make this in the var dash www dash or a forward slash, and then your site name or site location. For this, we're gonna do blog dot tech hut dot TV, hit enter. So now we're gonna to want to do is set the owner of that directory. And to do this, you're going to type in the following command, sudo chown your username, colon your username, and then that directory location. Go ahead and hit enter. And now we're gonna set the actual folder permissions. And to do that, we're gonna type sudo chmod, and we're gonna go with the permission 775, and then point it again to that 
proper location. So www.blog.techhut.tv, enter. And then finally, we're gonna actually gonna go ahead and CD into that directory we've been playing around with. So we're gonna go var www and then the directory. And now that we are in the correct directory, we have all the permissions set, we have all the prerequisites, we can now actually finally begin the process of installing Ghost. And to do this, all we need to do is type in Ghost install, hit enter, and then it's going to begin the process. And here it actually runs a set of checks to make sure we've done everything properly up to this point. So we have enough free space, we have a MySQL installation, our current Node.js version is proper. So now we're just gonna wait for it to download and install Ghost into this directory. And once it finishes the installation process, it's gonna ask you to enter your blog URL. Now, if you want an SSL certificate, what you do if you don't want anybody to have any issues actually connecting to your website, make sure you do type HTTPS. From here, we're gonna just fill out the rest of it, our actual domain name, which in this case is going to be blog.techhut.tv. Hit enter, and now we're gonna go with our MySQL host name. It is localhost, so we can just hit enter. Our username, if we remember correctly, is root, so hit enter. And our password is our super complicated password of Linode. Hit enter. And again, I do recommend you uh, make something a little bit stronger than that. Now we have our ghost database name. You could change this if you want to, but I would recommend just leaving it at the default. Hit enter. And now it's going to ask you if you want to set up a ghost MySQL user. I recommend doing this because this user will only be able to interact with ghost on your system. Go ahead and enter there. And now it's asking if we'd like to set up Nginx. This is something you basically have to do. So let's go ahead and say yes. Otherwise you are gonna have to do it later anyways, and it's gonna make your life much more difficult than it needs to be. Now here, this is important. This is gonna use Let's Encrypt to set up an SSL certificate with the domain name that we've inputted. So for this, you're gonna to want to select yes, and then give it an email where if there is ever a problem with your certificate, it can go ahead and send you anything it needs to. So now it's gonna go ahead and set up SSL. And if there's no issues and it can connect to the domain name and all that properly, it's all gonna to work completely fine. So as we can see there, it did set up SSL correctly. And now it's asking us if we wish to set up system D. Now this isn't technically required, but it's a really good thing to do. It'll make ghost run a lot better on your system. So let's go hit yes. And now it's going to ask us if we would like to start ghost. So this is the moment of truth. We're going to hit yes. And if everything was done properly, we should have no errors or issues at all. Watch, it's looking really good so far. It says ghost was installed successfully to complete the setup of your publication. Please visit this domain, which this ghost directory right here is just the setup process for the admin. So I'm going to hold control. I'm going to give that a click. And then I'm going to drag in this window over here so we could actually begin the setup process. As we can see, welcome to Ghost. Apparently over 2 million websites are using it, so that's awesome, you are now one of them. So let's go ahead and create our administrator account. So site title, we're just gonna go with Tech Hub Blog. Again, obviously you're gonna put whatever you want here, as well as my email address. I'm gonna give it a pretty good password. And then I'm gonna go to the next step, which is to invite staff users. So you could put in their email addresses here if you would like to. For now, I'm gonna do this later and take me to my site. And here is your dashboard. And that was a pretty easy installation process for something that looks this nice. And if we just go over to our main site, you could kind of see the initial layout and the default articles and all that on our website. It's pretty cool because it gives you a lot of little guides, tips and tricks in some of these predefined articles. For example, right here, start here for a quick overview of everything you need to know. Go ahead and click that and you can see it's just overall a beautifully formatted website. And again, these are just the defaults and you could add more themes and do a lot with this. So I'm gonna close this out. I just noticed my L is capitalized, try to ignore that. But on our dashboard, we could really do a lot here. One, we could start the setup guide, uh, but here you could set quick accent colors, which will change various things. So if I just selected that one, for example, you could see that subscribe button changed. You could change your icon, your logo, your publication cover, which is this background cover over here. If I saved and continue, this is where you can set up Stripe. So you could go in and get paid. And like I mentioned in the intro, you could actually use this to create kind of a uh, subscription service or a self host said Patreon. If you wanted to be completely independent from most third-party services, I'm not going to set this up right now, so I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. Here you could go ahead and create your very first member if you'd like to. Uh, I'm going to go over here and publish a post. So you can see the formatting of this. It's very simple, very elegant. It's kind of a block style, so if I posted something like 
welcome to Tech Hut. And then right here, I could do something like welcome to the new website. And up here, I can add a featured image if I would like to. So let's say we wanted to make this screenshot the featured image. We could add a quick caption. So this is GNOME. 40.5 and then of course you could proceed with the typing if we head over here you have a list of all your different settings you could add tags facebook cards code interjections twitter cards a whole lot of things to make a beautiful article we have our publish date if i want to click preview i could actually see what it's going to look like on the tech hut blog and there's a lot of cool things here too so if you want to share the preview you have little things to do that right here open it up in a new tab to view it, how it would look in a web browser overall it's looking good i'm going to go back for now and and go back. And then if I go to my drafts, for example, you can see that draft there. If I headed down to pages, we could go ahead and edit some of these. So if I wanted to edit my uh, about this site page, I could just give that a click and then just click anywhere and I can edit and just begin typing. And one thing you may be noticing, this is very simple when it comes to the tools and the options it's giving us with this, but it's okay because Ghost actually uses Markdown. So you could do just about anything that you would do with Markdown, including headings, back quotes, lists, images, text, text, links, and basically anything else. So for example, if I wanted to make this a heading, all I would do is add a pound symbol, and there we go. So if we go back out of here real quick, I'm going to leave these changes, and then we could go down here, we could set a light and dark mode, we could go over to our site settings, and here is where you could change general things, your actual design, navigation, your staff, you could change a lot of your membership and newsletter stuff, and also some advanced integrations, code injections, and you could join labs to actually test new features. Example of one of these is design over here. You could go under these, change the brand, so you could change how everything looks. We could do some home page specific settings such as changing that text size and going over to a list style for example overall it's a very clean system and i'm probably going to end up switching to ghost on my primary website and i am looking forward to doing that here on linode so that about wraps up our guide on installing ghost on a linode instance if you need any other further explanation or referenced material you go ahead and check the description down below it will link you to official guides and some additional Linode videos that will uh, further explain some things we discussed in this video. Also down there, you could check to get a $100 60-day credit, so you could go ahead and try this out today with absolutely no upfront cost to you. With all that said, if you do enjoy these videos, make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell down below so you do not miss any future uploads. Uh, with all that said, have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.